Hey everyone, it's John here, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can build this single formula dynamic calendar in Excel. So this formula is based on a date value, and then it's going to produce the calendar for that month of the date. So for example here we've got a date in March, and it produces the calendar for March. But if we change this, so let's try February, then our calendar is going to update accordingly. So let's take a look at how you can build this. So for our formula, we're going to use a let function, and this is just going to help keep everything organized so we can define variables and then assign calculations to those variables and then reuse them later in our calculation. And so first up, we're just defining a variable for our date. And then based on that date, we're going to extract both the year and month value. So to get the year, we're just using the year function on our date value, and that's going to return the year. And similarly, we're going to use the month function to extract the month value from our date. And then based on those two, we're going to create a date for the first of the month. And so to do that, we're going to use the date function, and that just takes a year, a month, and a day value. And we're just going to hard code one here so that it always returns the first of the month. And next up, we're going to calculate what day of the week the first of the month is. And to do that, we're going to use the weekday function. And so this one returns a number from 1 to 7, identifying the day of the week for that date. And so we're going to give it our first of the month date here. And there's a second optional argument that allows us to select the return type. And by default, it's going to be a 1 for Sunday, a 2 for Monday, etc., all the way through to Saturday. So we can either select 1 here as our return type, or just leave it omitted, and it's going to do the same thing. And so for August 1st, it turns out that the weekday number is 2, and that means our calendar should start on a Monday. Next in our formula, we're just going to calculate the column headings. And so here what we could do is just create a hard-coded array with these names in it if we were so inclined. And just as an example, it might look like that, and it would just return the names in a single row. But instead what we're going to do is create a sequence. And this one's going to have one row and seven columns. And now that returns the numbers 1 through 7, but we can actually convert these into the day names with the text function. So dates are really just serial numbers starting at 1, and so the serial number 1 actually represents the date of January 1st, 1900, and it just happens that that is a Sunday, so that works perfectly for us. And so what we can do with this sequence is wrap it in a text function and then format that sequence as a shorthand day name. And now we've got Sunday through to Saturday. Next up, we're going to create our calendar sequence. So we're going to use the sequence function again for this. And here we're going to have six rows and seven columns. And that's just going to create the shape of our calendar. But we need to adjust this so that our sequence starts on Monday in this case. And to do that, what we can do is create this formula as our start. So minus 1 times our start weekday. And if we add 2 to that, then that's going to ensure that our start day is aligned with the actual start day for the month. Next up, we're just going to convert this sequence into a sequence of dates based on those day numbers. And so to do that, we're just going to use the date function again. And we're going to use our year and our month and then our day value here. And that's going to produce a sequence of dates. And as you can see, not all of them are going to be in our target month of, in this case, July. So here we've got a date in June, and then the rest of the dates are in July until eventually we start at August, and then the rest of the dates there are in August. So what we want to do is remove all the non-July dates. And to do that, we're going to use an if function. 
And what we're going to do is just extract the month from these dates and then see if it's equal to our month up here. And now if it is, what we want to do is return the day number. So we want to return this. And if it's not, what we're going to do is just return nothing. So let's use an empty string there. And now what we've got is the days from here, but where they're not in July, then we get a blank value. So we get the days from the first all the way to the 31st. And the last part of our formula now is just to combine this with our column headers. And to do that, we're using a V stack. So that's just going to join those two ranges and return our final result, which is the full calendar. And now we've got a fully dynamic calendar that's going to update based on a single date value. So now if we change this to February, then we get the February calendar. So that's how you can build a fully dynamic single formula calendar in Excel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. And by the way, YouTube thinks you'll enjoy these videos, so check them out next. Bye for now.